Hi, hello. I just got a haircut. It looks okay. My bangs, my bangs are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So that's good at least. I'm working on a gender thing for two different uh, projects right now. Um, one of them I can't talk about. The other one is my butterfly game. Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to talk about gender. Uh, content warning, my language is not always perfect and I am not always perfect. And I am certain that some parts of this I could say not the best way, but I'm going to try my hardest. And please uh, let me know or forgive me if I say the wrong thing. <laughs> One of the best books I ever read about sex and gender, or the sex slash gender divide, or the biological slash political slash cultural definition of gender slash sex, <laughs> is Sexing the Body. Uh, I don't know if this text will be backwards, but here it is. Um, and in this book, it's really cool because uh, it, it's a little it's a little dated now, um, but it breaks down kind of the differences of like what we think in America and Western culture of as like the biological slash cultural divide when it comes to sex and gender. Um, and it's cool because it's it talks about the science and it talks about the cultural sociology behind both of these concepts um, and how they kind of work together. And ultimately, the coolest thing I learned from that book is that we don't understand biologically where sex comes from. <laughs> like, where, where certain, what we define as sexual characteristics, um, like what makes them happen like it, it could be in the brain or it could be in the chromosomes or it could be in the dna or it could be in the hormones but we just don't understand the science like we literally don't understand why 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 those certain things happen why our bodies happen the way they do we have some clues but we don't have uh we don't have 100 percent sure knowledge right which to me is super interesting <laughs> Because that means that a lot of, and the book says this too, a lot of the ways that we define um, gender and sex, uh, like biologically and culturally in the U.S., um, is, cult is cultural. It's just a cultural understanding of what those things are. Um, it's not scientific because we don't understand the science behind it. Um, you know, and most science is done by dudes. So... <laughs> You, you know, it's got a bias, and, um, you know, that, that really colors, that, that, that taught me how to look at those things differently in myself and in others. I've been watching um, Blue Planet, and it talks about this fish uh, that switches from, uh, like, uh, female biologically able to have able to procreate and have babies, basically, into a male fish able to uh, impregnate the other females. And like, we're talking about male and female as like this umbrella term that mostly means procreative sex uh, for the fish. But also, the, their bodies completely transform. Like, they have these head bulbs that grow three times their size, and the, the fish that was once like this size with one sex now becomes this size with another sex. So like, that's just one example of how we don't understand <laughs> how, how sex, biological sex works. Um, and you know, how, I, there's lots of different animals that do that. There are many animals that have many different kinds of um, sexes or sex traits at the same time. Humans are among them. Um, you know, we have intersex people who exist in the world. <laughs> uh, uh, this stuff interests me because, I, you know, trying to understand my own gender kind of involved this science, scientific inquiry, like what, what really makes our bodies, uh, what makes these body parts happen and then why do we associate them with certain sexes or genders as we define uh, in Western culture, right? So I'm doing um, this uh, like alien um, sci-fi thing where I'm trying to determine how to describe these like complicated ideas about sex and gender 
um, in kind of a cool scientific but also alien way and um, you know if we already have all these possibilities on earth with the animals um, humans being among the animals I'm talking about how do we then translate that into even more weird possibilities and the funny thing is that you have to look at all the weird possibilities that already exist that we just do not acknowledge in Western culture because we want to have a binary and we want to have male female man woman um, and you know that's not how science works that's not how biology works and that's not how culture works <laughs> so so first of all we have to remove ourselves of that assumption and then we have to move on to uh, well this is how it actually is but you know US culture doesn't want to accept or admit that and then we have to move into queer terminology um, contemporary queer terminology which is complicated because then you're looking at terms like uh, assigned female at birth or a person who has ovaries um, or the difference between procreative sex and sex for enjoyment or sensation um, sexuality as defined by the personal preference versus the cultural preference, um, uh, like the, the political, like how you need to fight for rights and your identity is political, so you have to identify a certain way, even though that might not 100% be, you know, how you really identify. <laughs> a great example of this is how, you know, I started identifying as non-binary to the outside world, even though I don't really a hundred percent like or feel that within my own identity right it's just the easiest way to kind of communicate to everybody else what's going on this shit is so complicated <laughs> so like how do you distill those complicated concepts in a neat way into a game text um, where it kind of gives the feeling of the setting that you want to evoke like what if you're going for hard sci-fi you kind of want to use some scientific sounding terminology but maybe you want to stay away from terms like um like sexual differentiation uh because you know even though we use that as a scientific term for animals and sometimes for humans it doesn't really match the, the language doesn't match our cultural understanding of that or what the cultural understanding should be. So how do you change that to make it still sound scientific but maintain, um, you know, the queer terminology? I don't know. A lot of queer terminology doesn't use scientific stuff. It uses cultural language. This is, this is what I'm struggling with right now. It's an interesting struggle. Um, it's just interesting. I haven't struggled with it before. <laughs> I'm editing this video and realizing that at this point I should say that it's science is using the wrong terminology like uh, the terminology that is developed by science is not always it, science is influenced by culture um, the people who make up these terms are often cis men um, and they don't always take into consideration how how it fits into the socio-political context and lots of these scientific terms are old and are not flexible. So science language versus queer language, science isn't like more um, legit. I would say actually, in fact, the sociopolitical language of um, queer terminology is more legit uh, because science always fits into culture. Science is a part of culture. So you can't, you can't uh, separate those two. I just wanted to to clarify that. I've been having a lot of conversations with it for the past two days um, with a bunch of different queer and trans folks um, trying to figure out like how to say this thing um, <laughs> and that's mostly what it boils down to like how do you say the thing and that's actually why I put the the content warning at the beginning of this because you know in these videos they're a little off the cuff and I don't have a script and uh, sometimes my brain is foggy and I don't say 100% the the correct language that I should be using. Um, but it's hard to use the correct language uh, and the language is shifting all the time. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't try. I do try. 
Um, but I definitely, it's very, it's just so easy to fuck up. And I'm becoming the old queer that I used to bug me, you know, like why, why is this person using old terminology? Um, and I'm, I'm starting to understand how much and how quickly it shifts. And especially now, actually, even more so with the internet, which is an amazing tool and we're using better and better language all the time because of it. But that means that some queer people are over here using this language and some are over here using this language and there's a disconnect, even though we might mean the same thing at the heart. Um, but language can be harmful, so that's why it's important to use the right language. And that's why it's important to use the right language in game texts, too. Um, you know, try to get it as close as possible as you can. Um, and you're, here's the thing I've learned, you're always going to fuck something up, but be ready to change it, accept feedback, hope that people can trust you, trust you enough, you know, to, and feel safe enough to give you that feedback so that you can shift it. Um, and, you know, older texts are just going to sound older in terminology. We're getting better with terminology all the time. There's this great book that I've seen floating around Twitter that um, uh, some trans folks have worked really hard to put together, and it's called The Trans Language Primer. Um, I think that if you are writing gender or sex or sexuality or people <laughs> into your role-playing game, um, I would recommend getting that book uh, and using it as a resource for how to talk about these things because when you're, you know, when you're talking about gender and, sex and sexuality and in culture in the U.S. in general, using the trans language primer or using trans language will be usually the best way to describe things because it's kind of like the 101 for all of gender everywhere. So you can use that even if your game isn't trans, even if your game isn't queer, um, it is like good gender language to look at, right? Anyway, the sex gender divide is a social construct and this has been my TED talk. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know down in the comments what I have said wrong because I'm certain there's something, especially in the beginning of this video that I said, you know, use the not not the best terminology um, until I got my stride. Uh, but you know, that's fine. Uh, as a trans non-binary person, queer person, I often get this stuff wrong no matter how hard I try because, um, you know, it's impossible to be perfect. And I will take that into your weekend. I'll see you next vid.